Lost Their Dedications Foundation Facebook page every Saturday by 10 a.m. to participate in ATP live group discussion on the popular child health topics such as dangerous child health practices, immunization, and child survival strategies. No is ATP Live because it's informative, educative, and interactive. ATP Live program for all parents and carers of children. Are you a mother, father, or you involved in caring for children? If yes, then log in to Ask the Pediatricians Foundation Facebook page every Saturday by 10 a.m. to participate in ATP Live group discussion on a popular child health topics such as dangerous child health practices, immunization, and child survival strategies. Don't miss ATP Live because it's informative, educative, and interactive. ATP Live program for all parents and carers of children. Are you a Okay. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to another ATP live session. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, and we're glad to have you. Dr. Bim is in the house, and she's going to be teaching us as usual, you know, sharing knowledge with us. So I'd like you to invite your friends. I'd like you to share the video because today is open house, so you are free to ask any question you want. You're not restricted by the topic or whatever topic. So feel free to ask whatever question you have in mind regarding your children. Dr. Bim is, you know, she's in the house. She's here to take all our questions. And I also encourage you to please share the video so that your friends can have opportunity to watch and learn. So thank you for joining us. Dr. Bimi, good morning. How are you today? Uh, good morning, Yopwe. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, Thank you so much for those who are joining us from every part of the world, wherever you may be. Uh, it's another beautiful Saturday, and we are here on Hacks the Pediatrician's Life. Uh, so invite your friends, invite family, everyone, they can join us. And if you have any child health-related questions, uh, this is the time for you to ask. Uh, just drop it in your comments. Uh, like I see some people are side dropping their questions already, and then uh, we'll be able to address them. But we just want to plead on you uh, to um, share our video. You can share it on your page, you can share it on your timeline, you can share it in any group that you belong to with the approval of the group admins, of course, and then you, we can all stay aligned together. So uh for the past few days we realized the legends make it an open house so that people can ask the questions and all that some days we'll go back to taking a particular topic uh to to handle but so this is uh, right now we just want to make it open house anything any child health questions you are welcome to ask thank you all right thank you dr bimi you have heard from dr bimi sending your questions. Like she said, we already have some questions. Um, give your friends an opportunity to ask their questions by sharing the video. You can also share on WhatsApp. Yes, you can. And people can watch live on their phones too. So can we go straight into the questions? Probably. Yeah. I have one here from Ajagun Mercy. What causes hiccups in newborn babies? Dr. Bemi, hiccups in newborn babies. Okay, uh, that's one of our most frequently asked questions on <laughs> pediatricians. It's one of the things mothers want to know. Um, ECOPS is, um, is usually in medical jargons, we'll say it's due to irritation of the uh, of the diaphragm along the phrenic nerves. Uh, so that is what normally stimulates the ECOPS and all that. You know, as baby, it's one of those mild, um uh minor issues or disorder if you want to call it that in babies so babies mm -hmm. so they can echo but it's not something to worry about it's not a disease it does not mean the baby has any problems there are instances where hiccups especially in adults frequent hiccups can be due to liver disease and all that but in newborn babies especially 
it is not due to any particular disease. It's just due to the uh, kind of stimulation of the diaphragm because they are growing. The stomach, stomach is being stretched. Diaphragm is being touched. It's really usually before or after feeding. So they can ache up and it will just stop on its own. So whether you do anything or you don't do anything, it will stop. So it's important that uh, mothers don't get themselves worried. I know there are lots of, um, uh, what do you call it now, like practices that people do, yeah. you know, some of them are harmless. Like uh, my mom would say, put a piece of cloth on the, on the fontanel <laughs> of the baby. <laughs> Some will say give water, but if your baby is below six months, please don't give water um, because we want you to do exclusive breastfeeding. And so you can breastfeed the baby if you want to, if you feel like, because sometimes mothers just feel like they must do something about everything. And as long as they are not doing anything, they feel like they are powerless. And so I don't have any problem with doing things that are harmless. So if you want to put white cloth on your baby's head, it doesn't do anything, but it doesn't cause any harm. <laughs> if you want to breastfeed your baby, you can, but please don't give water to a baby less than six months old. So this, this are what you need to do. And most time it, it, it will stop, it stop on its own spontaneously, whether you do anything or not. And as baby gets bigger, more mature, then even all the, the frequency of all those hiccups also will stop. So that's basically uh, what I would like to say about that. Okay. Thank you. Messi, I hope you have heard that. Yeah. And let's just say that for our uh, viewers on watch party, um, unfortunately, because of the technology we're using, we'll not see your own questions, but we we'll crave your indulgence if you are IT tech. <laughs> uh, if you have enough expertise, you can navigate to the page itself and drop your questions directly under the video on the Ask the Pediatrician Foundation. If not, I can see that our moderators are already working with us to help us. They will bring your questions up and they will be able to answer it. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. All right. Dr. Bimi, another question. My boy of four vomited three times over the night. No temperature, but loss of appetite because he has refused to eat. But he is complaining of stomach upset. Okay. The question. I think average well, ATP mom is like, what should I do as usual? Exactly. So, yes. Uh, if your baby is vomiting, is having lots of appetite, is complaining of abdominal pain, look like the child may have what we call gastroenteritis, uh, which basically is uh, saying there's some inflammation or irritation of the stomach and the intestinal lining. Mm -hmm. It may not be due to, uh, it can be due to various things. It can even be it's due to not infectious things like um, uh, maybe if your baby has uh, indigestion, maybe the last food they had was not properly digested, that can even cause that. Yes. Or it could be due to the gastroenteritis, which could be due to various things. It could be due to viruses. It could be due to um, uh, bacteria and all that, but if your baby is not having fever and it's just vomiting, most likely it may be a viral thing. So the most important thing is to rehydrate a child who is losing fluid through vomiting. I, I would say make ORS and give, but if the child keeps vomiting and is not able to tolerate the ORS, then that means you may need to take the child to the hospital because uh, vomiting is not the problem, but the child can get dehydrated and dehydration is what can cause major problem for us. So, but if you take the child to the hospital, if the child is not able to tolerate oral fluids, then they can give the child um, uh, intravenous fluid. That is what people call, call drip. Initially, it will, in some children, it will just stop. Um, however, a child with vomiting may also just be the beginning of another illness. Maybe that's just the beginning phase. It's not yet well established. So things may progress and all that. So I would just say, one, rehydrate to arise, give light diet, watch. If it persists or there are other symptoms that are coming up, then you may want to, or the child is not able to raise the ORS, then that's when you want to take the child to the hospital for further evaluation by the doctors. Evaluation. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Bemi. Let's keep our questions coming. Dr. Bemi is still here, live, yeah. and it's open house. So you're free to ask any question you want regarding your child. And before I go, All right, this is from Bandra DBC. Okay. You can go ahead. 
Okay, my baby of eight months does not like eating at all. What can I do? I've tried different cereals. <laughs> For me, eight months old baby. Yeah, so this is the most frequently asked question <laughs> on accident. <laughs> 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 And I think uh, it's the most frequently asked question any pediatrician will ever answer in their lifetime. Uh, because mothers just want their babies to eat all the time. And it's interesting because uh, when babies are growing up, we want them to eat and eat and eat. Then when they are older, when we all become adults, we all want to stop eating <laughs> because we are gaining it's weight. So it's just a paradox of life. Anyway, uh, just to go back to answer your question, um, Mothers, I found out that there's a lot of lack of knowledge about uh, how mothers feed their babies in terms of how to go about complementary feeding. Now, most mothers, especially if you have a mother who frequents ATP, you will know about um, exclusive breastfeeding. And it's so simple. You just put the baby to the breast and that's it. You don't need to prepare anything. You don't need to do anything anywhere, anytime, any day. Your baby can breastfeed. But after six months, you need to take your baby to complementary feeding. And this is where we start having issues. Now, mothers just think they should just start a baby who is on, who has been taking only breast milk. They should just put the baby straight on to uh, new food, complementary foods, and expect the baby to just start eating it like that. I'm eating it maybe just like eight, six to eight <laughs> times a day. That's not going to happen. And mothers also have uh, confusion about what food they should introduce because I can see that what you are introducing is just cereals. And complementary feeding is not just about cereals. Okay, so mothers think I should just go to, because, you know, anyway, maybe most of us are very busy moms and all that. People just think I should just go to the store, buy a tin or a can of cereal and just mix it and give it to the baby and maybe she start taking it. And when the baby doesn't take one particular cereal or make a brand or flavor, you try another one. That is not complementary feeding. It's not about cereal. And so, and some mothers even say, oh, my baby wants to eat the adult food. And it's, it's, they are worried that baby is not eating the stop but can and I mean, Seriously. so it shows that there's a lot of lack of knowledge about how to go about complementary feeding. So it is not a one, it's not a question I will answer in one minute. It's you need to for for understand how to go about doing complementary feeding. When do you start? What do you give? How frequently do you give? You can't start a six months old on two hundred mils of pap or whatever cereal you're giving and expect the baby to finish it. It's not going to happen. And so when mothers do that and the baby doesn't eat, didn't finish that, or the baby didn't even take it, <laughs> then they get sad to worry and then they begin to say, oh, my baby's not eating. Then you, you go to the next one, I've tried different things. Your baby is just eight months old. You just start complimentary feeding in two months and you try different, you know, you, you, when the way mom talk, you know that they've tried, they really tried. And I always said that you've tried too much. You have tried too many times. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So you really need to, so uh, Banjo, David, you need to go to Active Pediatrician Facebook group. Luckily, we have a, what we call a social learning unit in our group. There is a, a whole learning unit about complementary feeding. How to start, when to start, what do you give, how frequently do you give, how do you do it? I found out that if you follow through that module, and they are not very complex in their audio visuals, their videos are made by UNICEF with some partners, uh, Global Health uh, uh, Project. Very short video, five to seven minutes. Some of them you can watch on your phone, you can watch it on WhatsApp. Just watch them. It's, it's very, very simple. It tells you even how to use what you have in your kitchen to feed your baby. You may realize that you don't really need to go and buy anything, any cereal. Cereal is not the only complementary food. You can even use fruits. I'll always tell mothers, you can, a baby who is ready to eat can eat any food. But of course, there's a texture that you have to give at the beginning. So you're not going to start a six months old on a bar or a mala. You know, that kind of thing. You have to start with the, especially when they are starting <clears throat> semi-solid. And when the first few days, it's just maybe a couple of spoons. But if you want to give them everything, the baby is going to reject like that. So you, it's a gradual thing. You do it gradually and you increase it like that. Then when baby is eight months, then you go on to the, so that is how to do it. But you need to go and do all those videos. 
you need to watch them thoroughly and then you have understanding. I always tell um, ATP until you've done that course, we will not answer your question on, <laughs> on my baby does not eat. Yeah, because yeah. most mothers, I no want me to give them a magical one. Maybe to tell them, go and buy this also -so medication, give it three times a day, and your baby will begin to eat <laughs> 100 times a day or something like that. There's no magical one. It is knowledge. It is information. And it is patience. I always tell mothers, be patient. Don't be in a hurry. You... you, you most mothers try food for one day, they say baby's not you have to try for one week before you can even assume that baby is not going to eat that particular food before you now move into new thing. So these are some of the things you need to learn. We've done some, we've actually have a, a, a ATP life dedicated only to this particular infant nutrition. You may want to go and watch that as well. But I think if you do our uh, learning units on nutrition, then you have um, more understanding. I think. So don't be worried, don't be um the solution don't be uh, <laughs> don't be <laughs> how would i put it now don't, don't, don't feel discouraged yes but just know that yeah. it's possible but you just need the right information thank you adibis said thank you dr bemi this is from cynthia my five-year-old son my five-year-old son i suspected has not made elbow what specialist hmm. do you think i need to take him to Please, do you have any recommendations in Potakot? Cynthia, are you a nurse or a doctor? I, you, obviously, I think you're an professional <laughs> because I know that the average mom will not ask about nurse made What's help unless you, have, unless you have had Dr. Gogo as well. <laughs> because sometimes mom has Dr. Gogo. <laughs> okay, yeah. So for anything, anything at all that happens to your child, the first place to go to is your children name if it's something that happened like an emergency go to children emergency room um you go there they will see your child and they will call in the right professional so if you live in particular i would suggest uh, you go to the university of particular teaching hospital i'm sorry i don't know as many hospitals in particular but i definitely know that there's a university there's a teaching hospital in particular that's upth yeah. you can go there go through the children emergency room ask them they will see your child if they think your child needs to come to a clinic they will write a letter most likely you may be seeing the orthopedic surgeons and things like that but they will first see the child and then they, if it's something like an emergency they will, they will call them to come and see your child immediately if it's something that is that can waste then they will they will refer you to the clinic so i'm asking that question generally so anytime you have any health issues about your children Especially for those who live in this part of the world in Nigeria, there are many options. We have the primary health care system, we have the secondary health care, which is the general hospitals, then we have the tertiary health care, which is the teaching hospital. You can start from any of them because all of them are trained to know which cases to refer. So there's a referral system. So even if you take your child to the health center on your streets, they can tell you, oh, this is not a case for us to do at the health center, go to the Go uh, general hospital, or if it's not a general hospital case, they say go to the teaching hospital. At the teaching hospital, they all have the places where they triage cases, usually through the children emergency room. Oh, this is an emergency, we'll see you now. Or if some have house patient, general health patients as well. Though this is something that can go to the specialist in the clinic, then they'll give you a letter. So that is how to progress with any health issues because it's so amazing how many people don't know how to assess its care in the country. It's so, it's so amazing. I mean, well, that is one of the reasons why we have our program so that we can educate you about it as well. Thank you so much. So we're still waiting for your question, but while we're waiting, I was going to say something the other time, but um, um, before we ask some more questions, but now that we're waiting for questions, let me just quickly say that we on Axi Pediatrician Foundation, we 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 did a poll and we've we've listened to what you've told us about what oh, you yeah. think how best we can meet your needs better. So we're going to come up with our Axi Pediatrician Hub. So some people are scared that oh, does it mean that we don't have ATP Live? Does it mean we will not have uh, <laughs> uh, what's it called um, uh, the group again? We'll still have our group. We'll still have our okay. ATP Live. But you feel like the pediatrician in your pockets. So you have the pediatrician in your pockets, and we're looking at the one that 
even when you don't have internet, as long as you've downloaded it on your phone, you can just put in your questions there and you will get the answer. In other words, all our questions that we've had, that we've answered, you know, like some of the questions people are asking, and I said, this is the most frequently asked question, this is the um, frequently asked question, because we've answered those kind of questions over and over again. So we're looking to put it in something that you can have with you, you, you may not have listened the day we answered that question. This may be your own first experience with it, but you can now use it and have it, and you can just just type in your question and you get your answers immediately. You don't have to wait for our moderators and all that. But of course, we'll still run the group because there may still be new things that may not be on the app. So if you ask, if you ask the app and you don't have answer, then you can come and ask us either on the group <laughs> or you can come and ask us on the uh atp live program like this so that's what uh this program is going to be all about so just watch out we're, and we're going to try and make it as low cost technology as possible so that even those of even those who live in rural area you can gift it to them and yeah, they yes. can just you know uh have it because yes, the yes. essence of our group is to promote uh, child health and all that that's number one and we also listen to those of you that say you want us to have courses on, it's really on nutrition causes. So we're going to be doing that. So we've already have some already on the group, but sometimes I know, yeah. I find that some people prefer to have a live event, something that like they can <laughs> they can really <laughs> ask the clarification yeah. questions instead of just listening to the yeah. reading or the video or watching the video. So we're going to be doing some of those uh active pediatrician nutritional seminars or seminars on different um things we we'll also do that as well so you can also be on the watch out for that and finally before we go on to resuming asking questions because this program is sponsored by active pediatrician mm -hmm. foundation so you need to know what active pediatrician is doing mm -hmm. we are also trying yeah. to expand our outreaches so many people have been asking us when are you coming to delta when are you coming to Paracos? And are you coming to everybody wants us to come to the village you know that is fantastic <laughs> and we we really want to come as well and but i just need to let us know that active pediatrician is not a hospital and we are not going to take over the job of the regular hospitals the health centers we are just a complementary organization primarily focus on health education and information, but we do the outreaches to areas that are underserved, areas that may not easily get uh, pediatricians. Some of them have never seen the pediatricians. You know, those children are really underserved. So those are the kind of uh, places we try to reach out to. So we're, but we're trying to, we also want to make sure we touch everywhere. So it's not only legals or uh and all that but we've we've improved we're beginning to go to more states i think we've gone to over like five eight, five different regions now but we want to go yeah. to every state starting from nigeria and hopefully we may even go beyond nigeria to africa okay. west africa africa sub-saharan africa and but what that means is that we need a lot more volunteers <laughs> we need a lot more volunteers <laughs> and so that's why we've asked you guys to volunteer to be part of atp and I saw a lot of questions like, oh, what does it take to be an ATP volunteer? And people are wondering, what is it going to cost me? Yeah, very good question. The most important thing to be an ATP volunteer is to be willing, just be willing to give yourself. You don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be a nurse. You don't need to be an healthcare professional. So we have professionals like Okwe, who is a teacher, <laughs> who is a ATP volunteer, volunteering for us in the group, and even, you know, anchoring our ATP Life program and also volunteering for us at our outreach. She's been one of our outreach um, team logistics head for many years, and now almost all our outreach support has been there. So we have people, so you don't have to be a doctor. We have our medical professionals. We are very happy to have you. But the fact that you are non-medical does not mean you cannot volunteer for ATP. And we need volunteers in all the states. So all of you that are saying, when are you coming to my state? The question is, have you, yes. are you going to volunteer for ATP in your state? Yes. As long as you are ready to volunteer, we are ready to partner with you. So if you have not yet signed up for the volunteer, uh, we have put up the banners for all the various states in the country, including the FCT. And I've seen some states, uh, you know, fantastic. Of course, Lagos is always the incentive of excellence <laughs> because I'm also from Lagos. I'm in Lagos, so don't, don't mind me. Okay, so um, 
we may even have multiple, you know, we're going to organize our volunteers in Lagos to so maybe different groups and things like that. But in other states, please volunteer. We've not had so much channel from the northern part of the country. And these are even places where we really need to do a lot more work. Mm -hmm. So if you work, if you live in those areas, kindly volunteer, we will be getting back in touch with you. So thank you so much for being so those are the three um most uh, requested intervention by members of active pediatrician group and um, just to feedback that we're doing something about it and we're getting organized and we look forward to doing better thank you so let's go back to our questions all right thank you dr benny for that and well done atp all right this is from andrew kafor Thank you very much for your efforts. I am a physiotherapist and I must commend you for your measurable work thus far. Please, Maya, I want to appeal to you to also include a follow-up measure for those that report a condition. I think this will also help to see such person get adequate treatment as required. Okay, yeah. Dr. Bimi, Oka for Andrew is suggesting. Yeah, Andrew, thank you so much for the positive feedback. We appreciate you. And we thank you also for the suggestions about follow-up we try to do some follow-up. We, Of course, we can't do all the follow-up because, again, I said, um, ATP is not meant to replace your doctors. We are not meant to replace your personal prof uh, healthcare professionals. We are only meant to point you in the right direction. We want to increase your knowledge so that you know what to do, where to go, and things like that. That's our focus. So the job of making sure you do what you need to do and... That is actually the responsibility of the government and the health system in the various uh, states. But we try. Sometimes when we see cases that are really alarming to us, we will try. I remember I always, I always talk about the case of um, uh, that baby that had severe malnutrition. And we were all very worried about the baby. And we went after the baby, uh, even offline. Uh, you know, send message to the mom. I'm able to track the mom. We're able to help her. We're able to make sure that her baby got treatment. Then I was in loose and we're able to. So we did. We did followed up some babies like that. I also remember those triplets that one of them died and somebody posted about it. And we also went after that. And we were able to help the babies and make sure they went to UCH. Make sure they got treatment. Followed up with the professionals. But unfortunately, we are so limited in all of our profit, all our, I always tell people, all the um, volunteers for ATP are full-time professionals who work on their own job. So ATP is just a, uh, it's just volunteer, you know, effort. So we cannot take over everything. We're not running a full uh fledged uh, organization made up of, we don't have staff. That's just kind of what I'm trying to say. So we can't do exactly. some of those things. But maybe we can think about it in the future. But I think that if we increase the health knowledge and information people have, then people themselves will know what to do. They will take responsibility for their own health and they'll be able to, especially for the health of their children, and that which is our primary focus, and then they will do the right thing. But we we hear you loud and clear, Akafa. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, Thank let's you, move on. Okay, this is from Good Day Doctor. Please, how do I dress my baby? And how do I know if she's cold or hot? Did my perception of the weather determine start? Or baby's perception of the weather? Is it different from adults? <laughs> What's up with me? Yeah. Do babies thank feel hotter than adults? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you, Alima. I'm going to answer your question in a minute. But I have a feeling there are people on the watch party that are dropping questions. ATP moderators, please, please. Ujuwali, I did tell you I saw you before, but I don't know whether there are other people online. Please help us drag the questions. In we don't have person mm -hmm. from the watch party, and we have watch party on the ATP family and ATP uh, normal the regular ATP as well. So please drag in your questions for us. Okay, yeah, this is a very important question that Salima has asked. Um, okay. How do I dress my baby? And I know she has read on ATP that we say dress your baby according to the weather. Which means when you bed, when you live in a very cold environment, you have to make sure your baby is wearing warmer clothing. And when you live in very uh, hot environments, you have to make sure you don't over cover the baby, that baby is sweating and having itch rashes and or what have you. <clears throat> so <clears throat> how do you know whether your baby is hot, cold or hot? Number one, you can use your thermometer if you have one, but most mothers cannot just think of 
every time you want to dress your baby, go and get a thermometer. The easiest way to know is to feel your baby's palm. Feel their palm. That's the easiest way to know when the baby is out of cold. You feel their palms. If your baby's palms or, or feet feels cold to you, that baby is cold. That means you need to add more dressing and you can add more layers of clothing and wear socks and maintenance. And so if you, you, you should use your judgment. If the weather is cold, and you definitely know that that day you need to dress baby warmer, but just feel the palms and the soles, the, the, the way they feel to you will get you to know whether the baby is hot or cold. If your baby is sweating and their palms are warm and all that, then you may, especially if the weather is hot, then you may know that that means you are overdressing the baby. You can take out some layers. So it is just by using your own judgment, Salaman. But so that's how you know. So the perception of babies actually they don't have as much fatty layers like adults have. So their ability to handle cold is very difficult compared to adults. Then they don't also have this brown fat. That's on. I don't want to go into technical jargon, but did I just say that we adults can we can shiver, we can generate it better than babies. So babies can easily lose their heat and their body surface area compared to their size they are very small but they have a large uh, body surface area so they tend to lose it faster and they can't generate it to keep themselves warm so that is why we have to help them maintain their warmth externally by covering them and cold extreme of temperature whether too cold or too hot can cause problems for babies. So we call it hypothermia, we call it hypothermia, the extremes. Hypothermia is when they are cold too low and hypothermia when they are hot too hot. So you use your judgment to dress your baby. So if you dress maybe you think maybe it's going to sweat and you can reduce it a little bit. So I think that's how to to know what to do. I hope that is uh, good. I'll answer your question. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Dr. Bimik, do you mind if I take the questions from my phone? Yeah, go ahead. All right, okay, let's take this one first and then I'll go to my phone directly. Okay, this is um, from Oi. Okay, sorry, from Evelyn Prince. Good morning, doctor. My baby is just 10 months and very chubby. It's not so easy to carry her. I was advised to apply palm oil on her body and bait her with enzo ah. salts that her weight will drop and become light. Please, what do you understand about this method? Thank you. Okay, Dr. Uh, Bimi, over to you. <laughs> please, uh, Evelyn, don't do that. Don't bath your baby with salt. Don't, your baby's weight has nothing to do with bathing salt or not. Your baby's weight has to do with what you're feeding the baby with. And you didn't tell me what the weight of your baby is, so I don't know what the weight of your baby is. So it will be easier if you just tell me the weight of the baby. So I will know whether your chubby is something for me to worry about or whether it's still within normal weight because we have what is normal weight and what is uh, above. So we say the one, your baby is 10 months old and every 10 months old should be weighing 9.5 kilos, 9.5 thereabouts. So if uh, if your baby is weighing more than 9.5 kilos, they see, you know, some of us will be a little bit smaller, some babies will be a little bit smaller than the average, some will be a little bit bigger than the average, bigger. but they are still within the normal average. We, we usually say that between 80 to 120% of the average is still within normal limits. Normal. And so that, that's fine. So uh, if you tell us the ways, we can tell you whether that is within normal or that's not within normal. No, let's even assume your baby's weight is above what is normal. Then, how do you... Number one, most babies, when they become more active, they tend to lose those babies' fat. The, the most yeah. important thing to address is the food. Are you overfeeding this baby? Because, like I said to the last question we answered about nutrition, there's a frequency to the eating that baby needs to eat. Like a 10 month old, she only eats maybe three to four times a day in addition to the snacks. And, of course, you keep on breastfeeding. Then make sure you're not giving your baby junk food. What's that? What do I mean by junk food? Sugar. All these biscuits, all these uh, sweets, all these uh, Drinks, fat juice, all fizzy. those fat juices. I don't want to mention names now because I don't <laughs> want to also promote them. So you want to avoid that. Give your baby fruits, lots more fruits, lots more vegetables. You may want to go and do our... Those are the things you need to do. You don't need to do anything like, you know, that's a very... 
dangerous thing because your babies can absorb those salts into the body and cause damage to the kidneys. So please don't, and I keep saying this, don't listen to people when they say, do this, do that, and things like that. Please, when you, I'm so happy you've come to ask your questions on ATP because there are a lot of people, it's really in Africa, they say it takes a village to raise a child. It could be good sometimes when it comes to health, it could be very dangerous. Because people tell you all sorts of nonsense. I mean, I remember during the time of Ebola, people were buffing with salt because they, they don't want to have Ebola. Just because some people were playing pranks and put it on social media, especially these days of social media. And the next thing, some people were landing in the hospital with uh, the system being overloaded with salt. Some people, I'm sure, I think some, a few died. So these are dangerous things mm. to, to do. So please don't bath your baby with salt. And when people tell you to do something, please, please, and please always ask the professionals. Ask us and ask the pediatricians. Ask your healthcare professionals in your uh, the, your hospitals and all that. Okay. Uh, Dr. Lawale Ayeni Melo, thank you so much. That's my classmate from medical school. Yeah, thank you for watching. Okay, no, let's move on. Okay. This is from Machindema. To my mother. Good morning, my evil doctor. Please, is there any home remedy for kata on a two months old baby? Two months old yeah. plus, or should I just see a doctor? No, no, Shimamanda, thank you for your question. So <clears throat> most newborn babies, how do they the first question is how do they get the kata or cold? Uh what we normally would call acute respiratory infections. Number one is from people that have it in the house because it's two months almost time they are home so it is people from either daddy mommy or the brothers or sisters or all the visitors that are coming they usually mm -hmm. are the ones that will give the baby that so the first thing you want to do is to keep baby away from people that have Qatar, that have colds you keep them away you wash hands often you wash your, these are things you need to do to prevent and most time, most cell like that are viral. They will resolve on their own. But the prevention is the most important thing. You keep, you wash your hands often, especially um, before touching the baby, before anybody carries the baby. I know this is not maybe not be African, you know. You know when the grand, all the people from the village come, you can't tell. Oh, yeah, please wash your hands. Give them hand sanitizer. But it's important. Sometimes you just have to do it and sometimes i just said we'll keep your baby in your room and just go and welcome the visitor by yourself you know these are uh, wise ways of dealing with that but if they have to carry the baby they must wash their hands or they must use hand sanitizers keep your baby warm so keep the baby warm like i've mentioned just previously that babies are that if they cannot maintain their body it's easily so you dress them according to the weather. Of course, that does not mean you should overdress them, or that does not mean that you should not have your windows open, or there should be no ventilation. Yeah, that does not mean that. Please, because I see that sometimes we go to the other extreme and then maybe <laughs> come down with heat rash and all that. No, baby needs air. They need air. They need to breathe fresh air. So please open the windows and all that. But dress the baby appropriately. Your baby can sleep under AC. The baby can have fan in the room and all that. And the window. The most important thing is that there's cross ventilation. Definitely. New hair is coming in, old hair is going out, very important. Then the most important protection against colds and other acute respiratory tract infection in newborn babies is breastfeeding. Definitely. Yes, I know. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I was talking about breastfeeding. That is the truth. Because in breastfeeding, in breast milk, you have IgA, you have so many antibodies that keep the babies protected i always tell mothers breast milk is more than food it is about protecting your babies so all the people that gives baby breast milk substitutes they are only giving you food fine we're happy for that because sometimes we need that as well because sometimes for some reason some babies don't have the mothers are not there or the mother you know for some reason mother cannot breastfeed so we have some babies that will really benefit from baby milk and substitutes but most of them cannot replicate those antibodies, those protective agents against diseases. It's, it's not only breast milk that can give you that. Most of those other uh, substances cannot give you that. So keep your baby exclusive breastfeeding, protect babies against all these things because you you have been exposed to cold before. You already produce antibodies against them that is protecting you. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. breastfeed your baby, you release those antibodies into your babies to and baby. they protect your baby. Yeah. So if you do all that, that will be fine. Then usually within seven to fourteen days, the the 
cold should resolve. But if it's persisting or the child is having fever, the child is having cough, the child is not breathing well, yes, you need to see a pediatrician. Yeah. So that's just about the most important thing is the prevention. That's why I took more time uh, dealing with that. Thank you, Shimamanda. Right. Yeah, Thank you, Okay, from Messi. I have a baby outside the country, yeah. and the immunization schedule as well as type of vaccine day is different from the one here. It's been difficult for me to adjust. What do I do? Do I stick to the one of a place of birth or the one in Nigeria? Very important question. Very. Thank you so much, uh, Mercy. Mercy. Uh, Mercy, it depends on what you want to do. Are you going back to where you came from or you, are not, you have come um, to stay yeah. with us in Nigeria now? So if you've come, the, the immunizations are the same, basically. The only difference is that sometimes there are some immunizations that we will give that they don't give in other countries. Some countries don't give BCG, for example, whereas in Nigeria, we give BCG. And the reason why there are differences is that BCG, for us in Nigeria, because we are a TB endemic country, we have a lot of mm -hmm. cases of tuberculosis. So we need to protect our babies against BCG, but I mean, against tuberculosis by giving BCG. But there are countries that tuberculosis is not a problem for them. So they will not mm -hmm. give uh, BCG. BCG. Okay, for example, in Nigeria, we don't have flu. We don't tend to have those flu, so we don't give flu vaccines. But there are places they, in uh, in Europe that they have lots of flu. They have winter and they have flu, so they give flu vaccine. So just to give you reasons why there are differences in the immunization schedule. And then even the immunization schedule that we all give to get that, most of us give, some of them, the timing we give them are different, you know. So some will give, for example, two months, three months, four months. Some of us will do six weeks, 10 weeks, 14 weeks. You understand? So what I would suggest for you is to see a pediatrician who can marry together the two immunization schedule for you. And I think it depends on where you are going to be. If you're going to be in Nigeria, then follow the Nigerian immunization schedule. Follow the Nigerian Nigeria immunization schedule. There are things that the government don't give, but if you want them, you can pay for them. So those ones may be given free where you are coming from. And so it is in their schedule. So you have your card with it. They have written there that they're going to give maybe meningococcal vaccine or rubella, MMR, and things like that, which we which currently the Nigerian government does not give. But if you want to get it in Nigeria, you can still get it as well. Just that you have to pay for it. Do you understand? So it depends on what you really want to do. So I would suggest that you decide uh, and see a pediatrician who will help you to decide which one to give. So um, if you think the one from the other country has more vaccines and you are ready to pay for those extra vaccines, I, I can assure you there's no vaccine that you want that you can't get in Nigeria. I can assure you that. So they, you, they will get it for you because most of the companies making them are also here. It's just that you have to pay and some of them are expensive. But if you just want to stick to what the Nigerian government is giving free, then just continue with what the Nigerian government is giving free. You didn't tell us how old your baby is right now, so it, so you may so the earlier you go and just, I mean marry together what you really want well, to do. Well, it is not that difficult. It's just that you really need to see a pediatrician who can help you. And the way sometimes the way they write the vaccine's name may be different, but we are still talking about the same vaccine. But they may, the name may look different, you know. But they are still the same vaccine, so don't be confused. All right. Thank All you. right, I hope you have heard that. Okay, this yeah. is from Olua Fisayo. Please, my six months old, my, my six months old, my child will be six months on the 29th, and he has ball on the shoulder, armpit, and elbow, and on the right side. He's on exclusive breastfeeding, and he did not have a sound sleep last night. Please, what can I do? Yeah, your baby has boils. Boils are caused by bacterial infections, and it shows that your baby needs to take antibiotics. So, Fisayo, take your baby to your doctor. Even your ordinary GP can do that. They can prescribe the appropriate antibiotics. We don't prescribe antibiotics yeah. online. And I don't subscribe to mothers going to any pharmacy shop to buy antibiotics. You must see a doctor who will look at your baby. And the dose of the antibiotics to give is also important. That's the mistake mothers make. Sometimes they just go and buy the drugs. They just give any amount. The amount of drugs we give is dependent on the weight of your baby. So, and then you so the thing didn't work. Sometimes because you're not giving the right dose or you're not giving the right antibiotics. So please, please see your doctor and then they will tell you the right medications to use. And more importantly, prevent it by making sure you wash your hands regularly 
and and anybody touching the baby also wash their hands regularly and that will help thank you all right thank you dr baby this is from uchechi joy please doctor what can i give my kids to enable them eat because they, they are not having appetites can we go to ACP, uh, ask the pediatrician Facebook group, www.facebook.com slash groups slash ask the page, small letters, all one word. You will land in our group. And when you get there, look for units or learning units and go and do the nutrition courses on complementary feeding. So there's nothing you're going to give to your baby than food. So don't <laughs> think that the baby is going to recover. There's no drug for mm -hmm. appetite like that. And I don't subscribe to some of those marketed medication that they will say is to boost appetites and things like that. Some of them are actually not licensed for the purpose for which they are being marketed. Some of those drugs were licensed for other uses and they have some very terrible, dangerous side effects. And so mothers go there using those drugs thinking, yeah, the drug of improving appetite, but it has a lot of other dangerous side effects. The best way to make your children eat is to give them food as well and to try variety. We also have tips on how to encourage fussy eaters and things like that. So those are the things you really need. Don't be looking for any magic wand or medication. There is none. I can assure you that. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, Chichi Joy, I hope you have heard that. Yeah. All right, this is from Ezekiel Scholar. Good day, doctor. Thank you for your efforts. My baby is one year and four months, but now he doesn't eat fruit like rice, beans, plantain, and others. He eats fruit, cereal, pop, and snacks, and drinks. And he loves meat. I have tried making him eat, but he still does not eat. I think it's still on the same, that's a women, food, food, not eating. Yeah, it's still the same thing, it's okay, Stella. Just go and do that course. Uh, your baby is eating quite a lot, I must confess. So I, I know you're worried that you want your baby to eat adult food, but you just yeah. be patient. So if you just stick what he's eating, and introduce the new food one at a time. So um, try variety in presenting the food. And there are many ways you can put food together, you know, in a way that your baby will not even know, you know. So you just sometimes have to be very, very creative as a mom as well. So, uh, but your baby is just one year, four months old. I will, I will not sweat that at all. I will not sweat it. Just be introducing them to him gradually, eat together as a family. Eat the food in eat with the children. Don't give the children food like it's a punishment. Don't let them say that eating is something they have to do as if it's a chore. Mm -hmm. But when we all eat together as a family and they see you eating it, you are modeling into that. Sometimes you are even eating it, making them feel like you are eating something really wonderful and they are missing out by not eating it. And they are the ones that will be curious, like, oh, what is this same mommy is eating? Let me go and but if you eat together, so these are some of the right. simple strategies you can use. But whatever you want them to do, you also model it to them. Eat, sit together at, 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 at meal times, eat together as a family, but don't force them, don't push them, be patient. Gradually, they'll begin to get it. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Grimmy. Okay, this is from Leonard. May I give my four weeks kid or small axe for constipation? No, absolutely <laughs> no. Don't give, in fact, a four weeks old baby, don't give them any medication that is not prescribed by your pediatrician. And the second thing is that this constipation, what is your definition of constipation? Because most most people think a newborn baby who has not passed through for a couple of days has constipation. No, babies on exclusive breastfeeding may not pass through for even up to two weeks. And that is absolutely normal, nothing wrong with that. And you will see that the baby is fine, the baby is eating well, there's no swollen tummy, there's no vomiting, the baby is absolutely fine. It's because most of the breast milk is absorbed and digested, so they are not constipated. And when they eventually will pass this through, they will pass a big one, but it will be soft, it will be normal texture. So that is not constipation. So please, and for newborn babies, don't even try doing any self-medication. I bet I'm very, very particular about that because you're going to cause more problems. But please, 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 if at all you're not sure what is going on, go and see a pediatrician. Actually, for newborns, babies less than one month, zero to four weeks, zero to 28 days, don't do any experiments on them. Take them to see, even not just at night, we must see a pediatrician because you need to be sure that you're doing the right thing. Please, this is very, very important. So, Nelson, don't give anything. Just I hope you have heard that. <laughs> Give that baby keep on breastfeeding, and if you are not sure, see a pediatrician. Thank you. 
Well, time is running out. Okay. Oh. Like, and all the questions are coming in. Towards the end. Yes. Okay. Is it case called My friend's just... son. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can I go on? Go on, yeah. Okay. My friend's son's molar teeth has a hole about four teeth. Okay. Has a hole of about four teeth. And she yeah. did not have money to go for filling. Though she said the dentist asked her to come for washing and filling, but doesn't have the penny. What can she do? Uh, where is she based? If it's in government, if it's in a, I don't know which state, but you can go to the government hospitals and see whether they can help you. Uh, I mean, some some government hospitals as uh, 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 fees are quite slow. They are quite subsidized, so you may want to try that. You can try the teaching hospital in your state and all that, but. I'm sure you also, the most important thing for mothers and which is what we're talking about is to prevent dental caries because I think that's what you're asking about that there are holes, not old, but holes in the teeth and that's dental caries, less sugar, brushing teeth regularly, these are things we need to do, but try the hospital, try government hospital and when you are there as well, let them know that you have some financial challenges. Some of them have ways, our social workers, other ways that wish they can help you. You know, you know, so, so but you have to talk to them first and see what they can do. Yeah. All right. Is a case called is responding that he's still breastfeeding. I have tried yeah. stopping, but he has refused to stop. Why do you want one to year stop? Four months. Why are you stopping? Yeah, maybe it's just one year four months. So please keep <laughs> breastfeeding that baby. <laughs> we say breastfeed up to two years <laughs> or beyond. <laughs> so yeah, maybe yeah, maybe. <laughs> She has a legal <laughs> right to be on breastfeed. I mean, maybe it's doing what the pediatrician wants. Please listen to the baby. Maybe it's following the pediatrician's prescription. Breastfeeding up to two years and beyond. So leave the baby alone. Uh, it's okay. Thank you. All right. So what time is running yeah. now? We need to quickly answer all our questions so that we can go. Um, okay. Oh, but can I just this run through the myself? Yeah. Okay, please, very quickly. So that I will not, we may not have time to read all of them. Uh, okay. Okoli is saying your baby has rashes and some medications and the rashes disappear and it's back again. So if your baby was treated and your baby now has, is uh, it's not better or whatever was treated came back, you need to go back for what we call follow-up. So go back to the pediatrician and let them know. That is very, very important. I get that question a lot. Mothers don't understand that, yes, your doctor may have treated your child. If the child is not better or whatever was treated came back again, you need to go back to the pediatrician for what we call a follow-up. There's always follow-up. Follow-up is very, very important so that your doctor will now tell you because the doctor know, be know better and the doctor may have had two or three options of what they think may be wrong and they just said, okay, let me treat this one first and now if this is not better, I'll, I'll do this. So you really need to go back to see the doctor for uh, follow-up. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks for your... Okay, Chimamanda is giving me a feedback on that question. Yeah, I'm not saying it's only about breastfeeding that your baby will not have cartel. Of course, if your baby is on exclusive breastfeeding and there are people who have cold visiting the baby, sneezing into the baby, mm -hmm. touching the baby, the baby is still going to have cold, even with the breast milk, you know? So you, you don't say because you are giving breast milk, it's just like saying because you, you think your house has a fire extinguisher and all that, and you're going to set up a fire. I mean, you won't do that. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> principle here. So you breastfeed your baby, but you don't uh, unnecessarily expose the baby to germs or cold. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all part of the... Because even though your body could protect you, but your body could also be kept overwhelmed. And that's actually what happened when we are sick. It's because our natural defense system was overwhelmed, overwhelmed. by whatever uh, infection is coming in. That's what, mm -hmm. what happened when we... It's not as if that we're, we're exposed to millions of germs and bacteria every day, but we're not sick because we have a natural immune system that is working. And that's the problem with those who have HIV. That natural immune system is broken down. Mm -hmm. So even things that normally would not have caused illness that their immune system would have handled, then they, their immune system cannot handle it because the immune system is broken down, then they, they fall sick for any later thing. The same thing, the same analogy here. The fact that maybe it's on breast milk and it's protected does not mean that that immunity cannot be overwhelmed if the baby is exposed to too much 
of the germs and all that. So I think the most important thing for you, apart from the breastfeeding, is to also make sure that your baby is protected from people that have cough, cold, cancer, mm -hmm. and people wash mm -hmm. their hands before touching the baby. I hope that is clear. And I'm rushing now because we have just, I think our time is actually up. So we just quickly run through. Uh, Bide me say my, for, and I'm not pregnant. Oh, so uh, Bide me, um, you need to see your gynecologist. Uh, I, I wish you all the best. Just see your gynecologist. They are the experts. I'm a pediatrician. Yeah. When you have the baby, come and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, yeah okay it's lots of questions about my baby is not eating my baby is not eating i've answered that question team amanda you need to go and watch the units on accidental facebook group about mm -hmm. complementary feeding um my five months old baby pull four to five times a day that that is normal there's nothing wrong with that and the stool is slippery, is slippery. Yeah. that slippery part i don't know what are you feeling your baby is your baby on exclusive breastfeeding or is your baby on other food that will help us to answer that so but i won't worry if your baby is on exclusive breastfeeding just keep breastfeeding exclusively no water no drugs sometimes when you give medication like even your multivitamins they can make those mm. things up because they that's generate true. those mucus and things like that but and if that's the case you don't really need to worry but you really need to be sure there's nothing i will worry if there's blood or for example in the stove or it's so watery ah, i will worry about that but if it's four or five times a day, but maybe a little more, but not like watery stool, not bloody stool, I will not worry about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sonia mm -hmm. is saying, what causes the baby not to be able to wait beer? Uh, how old is this baby? Is the baby, that question is not very clear. You need to ask person in context. A newborn baby, for example, cannot wait beer. But a one year <laughs> oh, old should be able to do that. So you see. need to let us know the context. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Kim Amanda is saying she has got an answer. Oh, good, fantastic. So you saved me having to answer your questions again. Thank you. Uh, Alima, when can baby begin to see? So Alima, I think you really need to go to Ask Retention Facebook group <clears throat> and Sorry. read the post about developmental milestones. Babies can see from the oh. day one. They can see from birth. So there's nothing wrong. They are not blind. It's just that they are short-sighted. <laughs> So they can only see between their mother's face and the breast milk. That's what they can say, but they can see from their one. And if you think your baby is not seeing, and by the time they're about six weeks, they should begin to follow. So when you move a toy or you move your face as a mother, a six weeks old should be able to turn and look at you and follow you at least through 180 degrees. I mean, like a straight line. So if your baby is, when you move or you bring things or your baby is not turning to look at you, I will worry about your baby. And it's only around that time they also they begin to smile at you. Not the one they smile in their sleep or that you think is angels uh, making them smile. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, really, what because you should smile, they recognize, so this is my mom and they give you a beautiful smile. Oh, so it's only from six weeks. So usually by six weeks, if you are not getting those responses, please, please, please see a pediatrician. Our time is up now. We gotta go. Okay, uh, I will just answer all the questions that I've dropped before 11 o'clock, then I will, will round up. Okay, can a baby okay. of 11 months take one expeller and what can I use to clean her mouth? Nice okay, we say 11 months old should take uh, from 12 months. That's when you begin to deworm them. And then uh, um, to clean the mouth, use toothbrush brush and toothpaste. That's what you should use because they are ready having teeth at 11 months so you can use yeah. the brush and toothpaste okay uh baby's taking cod liver oil it's not necessary it's not ne I, I we don't recommend it we recommend that you feed your baby properly that is the most important thing to do there's nothing wrong also if you want to give it but you have to be very careful that you don't give excess because there's a quantity you give uh the fat soluble vitamins can accumulate in the body and it can be an issue so it's it's okay if you want to give it but be careful that's what i would say but it's not necessary it's not absolutely necessary, necessary. Really. Truth, yeah. you don't need to teach a baby how to sit the baby sits by themselves uh, we consolatrice you don't need to teach them how to say it just leave them. Usually, most babies start sitting by five to six months. These are developmental milestones. The same way you don't teach them to bring out their teeth. You don't teach them to stand. They do. They, it's, it's, it's a natural physiological thing. They will do it. Whether you, it's, they don't need to be taught those things. That is part of their growth and development. So just leave the baby 
because I see mothers two months old baby, <laughs> three months old baby, they are already trying to put them in. So you are putting unnecessary pressure on the spine, which can be dangerous. Just leave the baby. When baby is ready, usually by three months, four months, their neck can stand still straight. Then by five to six months, they begin to sit. They go into that sitting position by themselves, but you need to support them because they tend to fall. But by the time they're about seven to eight months, they can sit straight by themselves. So please, please, don't need to teach them anything. Okay, final question. What is the best way to stop respiration? So we have a very fantastic article on women from breastfeeding. You can just go and read about it on our Facebook. It's, very, I, I, it's, a, it's a discussion, and we have an article on it. It's so detailed. You will have more information than what I can give you in uh, one minute, I'm telling you. So just go to our Facebook group or our, our website, and then you're going to get the answers there. It is www.axepreditions.com, and that's it. Okay, so we're done. Um, I can see some people still have questions. At the beginning, you were always slow in joining us. Then you start coming home with lessons at the end. Unfortunately, we're supposed to be an one hour program, but no problem. What you need to do now is go to our Facebook group. You can drop your questions there, and our moderators, our professionals, they will answer you. You don't have to worry. The fact that Dr. Bimi has not answered your question, or even if I have not answered your question to you, I, should, I know I rushed through the last set of questions. That's go to our yes. Facebook group. We run the group uh, open. The group is open for questions from 24 hours from Mondays to Saturdays. The only day we take off is our Sunday so that we can also refresh. And we also want you yes. to use that day to read, not just ask questions, read up what other people have asked, go to the website, read information and things like that. So you really need to go to our Facebook group. If you are not, if you don't know our group or you don't know, just type ask the pediatrician into your Facebook um, um, uh, page and search, you, you, you will see ask the pediatrician. I mean, we are one of the biggest groups that you will see us there. Go into the group and ask your questions. We will answer you. Please, before you ask your question, make sure you go through our, our announcement page and notice the group rules. So that because sometimes if your group, if your question violates the group rule, like for example, if you put a picture of a child's private parts, for example, we're not going to approve that because we don't want to promote shy pornography. Or if you're putting spam content or you're advertising, we're not going to approve. But if you ask sincere child health questions, we will approve it and we will answer you. And we try to do that. Even though we normally say, oh, give us up to some two hours, invariably we answer your question within 24 hours almost every time. So. Go to our Facebook group, ask a question there, and then we can, you know, answer it. Okay. Thank you so much for those who joined us this morning. Like I said, if you didn't answer your question, please don't drop your question on this video after the program this is, is over. Exciting. Because we won't be able to answer it. And um, oh, the, the, the page doesn't even have a reply button. So the best way to get your question answered is to post it in our group and then we'll answer that very fast. And if you have a question that you think is anonymous you don't want people to know we are asking the question you can send us an email on ask at ask the pediatricians the pediatrician is with an a and we say yes, yes at the end because sometimes people don't get the email correct and then they say they, 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 yes, they email they don't get the devices ask ask at ask ask t h e p a e v i a c r I C I A N X dot com. Ask at ask the pediatricians dot com so that you will answer your question and all that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Some people are just giving us feedback. So thank you so yes. much. Okay. okay. So, We're done. You want thank to you, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. It's always nice to have you. And hopefully, next time, we hope your questions will come in early so that we'll be able to take as much questions as possible. Dr. Baby, any final words? So say bye-bye. Yeah, so I really want to thank all those who have uh, watched ATP Live this morning. And just to let you know that you can always watch ATP Live, even the previous episodes. You can watch them on our Facebook group, on our Facebook pages, if you just go to the videos. 
or you can watch them on our YouTube. We don't have so many people subscribing to our YouTube channels, but if you want to see all our old videos, they are on YouTube. And I want you to subscribe to Active Channel YouTube channel. Uh, all you just need to go to go to YouTube and put Axi Pediatricians and you will get, this is Axi Pediatricians as well. You will get our YouTube um, and just click subscribe so that even if you miss any of our programs, you and like so some people are asking questions about nutrition and all that, you can quickly just go and watch the Entity Life on Infant Nutrition. Very lovely. We answer all these questions you're asking us. We've answered it already. So subscribe to our YouTube channels, share our videos, everything on ATP can be shared. You can share it to your friends that you know will benefit from this and keep on spreading the uh, child ex, um information uh, all over the world. Um, the program is just for one hour, so we're done. Thank you so much for joining me this week. <laughs> I hope to see you again next week. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye. Are you a mother, father, or are you involved in caring for children? If yes, then log in to Ask the Pediatricians Foundation Facebook page every Saturday by 10 a.m. to participate in ATP Live group discussion on the popular child health topics such as dangerous child health practices, humanization, and child survival strategies. No one miss ATP Live because it's informative, educative, and interactive. ATP Live program for all parents and carers of children. Are you a mother, father, or are you involved in caring for children? If yes, then log in to Ask the Pediatricians Foundation Facebook page every Saturday by 10 a.m. To participate in ATP Live group discussion on a popular child health topics such as dangerous child health practices, humanization, and child survival strategies. No one miss ATP Live because it's informative, educative, and interactive. ATP Live program for all parents and carers of